Hi everyone, welcome to our Global Accessibility Awareness Day webinar. My name is Natalia Toranzo. I'm from Cordoba, Argentina. I am tech manager and SME of the quality accessibility practice at Globant, and I'm very excited to be part of such an important event. Before we start, I just want to go over a few points. This event will last around 45 minutes. If you have any questions, please feel free to add them in the chat or in the Q&A session. We'll be answering all your questions through the same chat. Please be advised that these sessions will be recorded and shared on our official platforms. The main goal of this webinar is to introduce you to what digital accessibility is, what is the mission of Global Accessibility Awareness Day. We also will share some of our company initiatives to build an inclusive and equitable mind. So in this session, you will learn how people with disability use the web, the most common barriers they experience, and how to remove them to ensure our products are accessible to everyone, regardless of their physical or mental conditions. And now let me introduce you to Francisco, who will be joining me on this webinar. Thank you, Nati. My name is Francisco Suarez. I am currently a web UI developer at Globant Cordoba. I am very happy to be here today, sharing this important day with you all. I hope that from everything we talk about today, you can take away a learning experience and then share it with others. Today, we have a very important event. Today, we celebrate World Accessibility Awareness Day. The purpose of this day is to get everyone talking thinking and learning about digital accessibility and inclusion. The GAAD Foundation was launched in 2021 to mark GAAD, the anniversary. Its mission is to disrupt the culture of technology and digital product development, to include accessibility as a core requirement. In 2020, Webine analyzed 1 million of landing page to find accessibility issues and found the following data. 98% come page with a less one cat failure and 16 average number of error per home page. Among all this error, we can find the following as the most frequently report. A6% is in relation to low contract tests, the 66% in relation to missing image alt text, 59% in the relation to empty links, and 63% the missing from input label, 28% empty button, and 28% relation to document language. But we will, we will talk about them later on. Now, we'll talk about our accessibility stain and how we at Globan contribute. In Globan, we are a digital native company that helps the organization reinvent themselves and unleash their potential. In Globan, we work every day to improve accessibility for our clients and our internal initiatives to promote the inclusion. 27,000 Globers around the world and more than 800 clients worldwide. At Global DNA, this is based on the central pillar, BKIN. BKIN is the best way we are Global DNA standard, making prevention a force for positive change. BKIN is not a program, it's a way of life. BKIN is a call to action to build a more balanced and fair future together. It is a comment to multiply the positive impact of all initiatives, promotion, the social, environmental, economic, and cultural good of humanity. In relation to Bikine, having a different range, including Bikine to yourself, Bikine to your peers, Bikine to humanity, and Bikine to the planet. We want to transform reality to make this world a better place. In relation to BeKind, we have a many initiatives. For example, one of the most latent initiatives at Globan is the Unlimited Community. 
a community that promotes inclusion and diversity within the company. Unlimited is a show to transform the organization by creating a workspace that enhances the spin of people with disabilities and different conditions. We promote and build a diversity and inclusive culture, transforming our reality with solutions that reach everyone. Now, Nati is going to explain what a digital accessibility is. Thank you, Fran. Okay, so before explaining how people with disabilities use the web, let's first review some important concepts. So, what is digital accessibility? Web accessibility is an inclusive practice of ensuring there are no barriers that prevent interactions and actions to digital content by people with disabilities. Why does it matter? There are at least three primary reasons why accessibility is important. The first, and I will say the most important reason, is that accessibility promotes inclusion. Making our products accessible provides equal access and equal opportunities to everyone, regardless their physical or mental conditions. According to the World Health Organization, an estimated 1.3 billion people experience significant disability, representing 16% of the world populations, or let's put in other words, one in six of us. Impressive. We need to break those barriers and stop excluding such a substantial percentage of the populations. The second reason is that accessibility promotes usability. When we design our content, taking into account accessibility guidelines, our applications and platforms will be more intuitive and easy to navigate, facilitating the comprehensions of instructions and helping prevent errors. And finally, the last reason, the third reason is that while making our product accessibility compliant, we are preventing discrimination lawsuits and further legal conflicts. So what, why accessibility is a must? Simple answers, because it's the right thing to do. Now, Let's jump to the accessibility principles. In order to under understand how people with disability use the web, first, we need to review the four principles defined by the Web Content Accessibility Guidance, which is the main international standards organization published by the Web Accessibility Initiative of the Worldwide Consortium. These guidelines are grouped into four principles, perceivable, operable, understandable and robust. I'll go through each of them. So let's start with perceivable. We need to make sure content is perceivable, which means that users can identify content by means of the senses. Let me provide some examples. Our content should be accessible for screen readers. Screen readers are tools that are essential to people who are blind since these technologies reads allow what is on the screen and users can adapt them to their needs. In some cases, these screen readers can also be used with a braille display. Another example, as we can see in the icon, we have an eye and, a, and another icon that represents the deaf people. So the other example is we need to provide transcripts and subtitles to videos and recordings so these people can access the information. So that was the first principle. Now, let's explain the second one, operable. In order to be compliant with this principle, we need to make sure content is accessible by keyword and using co voice commands. So users with motor disabilities will be able to access and interact with the information without forcing them to use the mouse. Then we have the third principle that is understandable. And it means that we need to make sure content is comprehensible for users with cognitive impairments. So they can access, read the information and follow instructions in simple way without distractions and preventing errors. And finally, we have the fourth principle that is ROST. We need to make sure 
our websites and platforms are compatible with a variety of user agents, such as browsers, devices, screen readers, among other assistive technologies. There is a lot of information about these guidelines and principles. You can find all that information in the Web Accessibility Initiative page. I won't expand on this given the limited time we have. So let's move on the next slide. Okay, here we are going to see some of the most common barriers to web accessibility. I will give you some examples. Okay, let's start with the low contrast. When text contrasts poorly with its background, it makes reading more difficult, especially for people with low vision and color blindness. Following the accessibility guidelines, the contrast ratio should be at least 4.5 to 1, or 3 to 1 for large text. In order to validate this rule, you can use tools that evaluate the text and background color combinations and provide the contrast ratio, as you can see in the image on the right. In this case, I use contrast checker tool, but there are a lot of tools that you can use to validate this rule. Now let's go to the second example. Missing four labels. This is a common error with forms, inputs with no labels and missing instructions. As you can see in this form, there are no visible labels associated with the inputs. Instead, there are placeholders describing their purpose. There are critical accessibility problems with this approach. First, when users fill in, in the inputs, the placeholders will, won't be visible anymore and will have no visual context about the input purpose. Also, there are no instructions on which of the inputs are required or what format of the entry is valid. This will cause users to make mistakes, get frustrated and possible abandon the page. Another problem presents when people with visual disabilities navigate through the content using a screen reader, as you can see in the second image. Due to there being no inputs and label associate, associated, the screen readers will announce each input as edit blank, making it impossible to fill in the form. When forms are not designed with accessibility in mind, people with disabilities are likely to have difficult or even find it impossible to enter data without error. Okay, so now let's review some other examples regarding links and buttons. Empty buttons and links purpose. Having links and buttons with no visible names describing the functionality will prevent a screen reader users know what the button or link does. Users expect a particular interactions with links and buttons. If a user doesn't know what a button does, they may get unexpected or undesired results, such as being redirected to an external site or getting trapped in a model or pop-up. Or pop -up, sorry. Also, as you can see in the second images, in the second image, a screen reader user usually press the tab key to navigate through links, buttons, and other interactive elements. Having links such, more info, see more, click here, etc., fail to provide the necessary content to the user. So we need to avoid having those type of links and buttons names. Okay, here we have two other common barriers, missing image alternative text and missing captions. Let's go for the, with the missing image alternative text. Blind people can access images content when alternative text is present. If the images, icons, graph, etc., don't have this attribute, the screen reader will announce incomprehensible content, as you can see in that image that is only announcing the image's source. It's important to add meaningful description to images. In case that you have some images that are poorly decorative, the alt text can be null or empty, so that the screen reader will ignore them. Another common issue is 
on recordings or videos. When we have this type of content with no captions, transcripts, or subtitles available, deaf people will not be able to access this content. Having this issue on e-learning platform or even on demand streaming services is a serious discrimination issue. There are many types of accessibility issues on different platforms and devices, such video games, e-learning platforms, mobile, websites, etc. I just mentioned some of the most common ones. In the next slides, uh, Francisco will show you some other best practices to fix and uh, we'll show you some other issues and code accessibility wise content. Thanks, Nati. Um, it's very important to be aware of this typical mistake. Um, try to prevent them when working with, uh, with accessibility. We would like to share with everyone best practice relation uh, related to coding in order to fix these issues. In relation to headings, we must reference the order of the headings. If we can have the other type, for example, paragraph, it is important the order of them. In addition to this error, let's mention some more like the headings. These are a fundamental element to improve the accessibility. It is important to have the clear, clear structure of the site and faster navigation. Headings and subheadings are important to help the, the people understand the structure of the page. In relation to missing document language, for example, in this HTML, uh, in this code HTML, uh, the HTML tag would have a link attribute, which must be in the language of the site content for screen readers to read the correctly and well as with uh, the correct pronunciation. In the missing forms or input and input labels, it is important that if we have an input, we add the correct label to it. For example, the input have a name username, and the label is in relation for the for attribute in relation to this input. And the empty buttons, for example, skip to main content. If you have an empty button, it is important to remove or add a value to it. In the next slide, the missing image to alt text. The alt attribute in the image will allow to have a better clarity in the image. This is will get better context for the screen readers. We might encounter the situation in which the image is only for the script purpose, and we must place its empty and um, um, alt attribute. In the case of the end links, for example, go to below and site. And on the other hand, the link miss must also contain information or we must remove them for our site. In the case of the captions, this is very important that people can have more context or of why we can talk about in the video. We can have its end video share automatically or its separate container which track wha what is the begin said in the video. For example, in this code, you have a video the source tag and the track using the caption uh, for different language. Okay, thanks for joining us. If you're interested in or participating in our next webinars, please follow us in our LinkedIn profile. We are keeping posting about these sessions and another one. Thank you. Thank you so very much.